us. I think another reason why we struggle with evangelism is many of us have a defective view of, of sin and of holiness. The attitude that the older brother has when he comes back shows that he's not looking at sin and holiness properly because he's almost jealous of his brother, isn't he? That he went off and did what he didn't have the guts to do. You almost get that because he comes, he comes in. He won't go into the party that they're having. And his father comes out to bring him in. And, and what does the older son say to his dad? He says, look, all these years, I've been serving you. And the Greek word is doulos, slave. Basically what he's saying is, all these years I've been slaving for you, and I've never disobeyed your commands, and you never gave me a goat to celebrate with my friends. Do you hear his attitude? He's jealous of his brother. My brother is out having fun while I'm here obeying you, and it's such a drudgery. Would you say that's a defective view of holiness? Huh. I would say, and his father has to talk him out. I mean, it's, it's how people think today. Oh, I, you talk about accepting Christ, and you'll get people that'll say this to you. Oh, I, I can't become a Christian now. What? And not have any more fun in my life? <laughs> I can't fool around. I can't look at bad pictures. I can't get drunk. <laughs> Some of you may think that way, that being a Christian is just the dreariest thing. But let's think this through logically for a minute. Who's going to end up in a better place? A person who goes off carousing every weekend, drags themselves into the house at 3 a.m. They wake up puking. They, do, they can't think straight in the morning. They can't keep their marriage together. They can't hold a job. They don't know their kids hardly at all. That person or a person who doesn't do any of those things? Who's going to end up in a better place? Who's going to look at the mirror at the end of their life and, and feel a sense of satisfaction that, you know, Lord, there with the, for the grace of God go I, but I gave you my best. You know in your hearts that what we're saying is true. Sure, there is pleasure in sin. The Bible says as much. I guarantee you, the young brother, when he first went out, I bet you the first few weeks, maybe the first few months, he was having the time of his life. I'll bet you. But this movie always ends the same way. Sin can never lead to lasting pleasure. And he ends up exactly as, as sin brings any man or woman to, a place of poverty, addiction, regret, and shame, realizing that his old man was, was, wasn't so dumb after all. Where is true happiness to be found? It's found in God, in a relationship with Christ. Obeying Jesus is not drudgery. Following the Lord and keeping his commandments will bring you to happiness. You're not missing anything. If you go your whole life and never look at pornography, good for you. You don't need to. You're not missing out on anything. There is nothing you gain or learn by experimenting with sin. If you never go out and get drunk, good for you. Keep it up. Almost forgot about this, man. Um, I asked Ben if he'd bring some dog food here. Um, I want to, instead of uh, communion wafers this morning, we're going to use dog food. Is that okay? Um, and maybe you, to get your palate ready, who wants to have some? Anybody? It, 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 it's good. Well, it smells a little bit like shoe, wet, shoe leather, but um, anybody? Do you have to, okay, question. Do you have to eat dog food? to know whether it's good or bad for you or not. No. Can you, you want some? <laughs> Do you need to uh, sample dog food to, to, just to see what you're missing? No? Will your life be more uh, satisfying? Will you be more well-rounded if you have dog food? Why, why not? None of you are taking it. <laughs> Well, my dear sister, and what's your name? Margaret. <laughs> Margaret, that's what Jesus is saying to us. Will you take my word for it? That when I tell you right from wrong, it's not because I'm trying to rip you off or keep you from having joy in your life. Will you take my word for it that if you do what I tell you, that you'll be happier in the end? and better off in the end. And I want that for you because I love you. 
You know, I, I think one of the epiphanies I had about holiness a few years ago is that when we struggle with sin, we fall into a sin habit. It's not that we love our sin too much. It's honestly that we love God too little. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. It's a love problem, not, not so much a sin problem. 